Hi, now, this is an example that you might like to try. It follows up what we were talking about in an earlier tutorial where you've got more than two forces acting on a particle. What I'm asking you to try is find the resultant force then acting on the particle by these forces and find the angle that it makes with the 5 Newton force. So if you'd like to have a go, just pause the video, come back when ready and uh, check your working out with mine. Okay, well let's see how you got on. Well first of all, I'm going to say that this is equivalent to say the forces X and Y acting on the particle. I'm going to have X to the right, X Newtons, and a force of Y Newtons acting upwards. I've assumed that it's going to move off somewhere in this direction. If I'm wrong, then X will come out negative or Y will come out negative and then all I need to do is just reverse these directions. Okay, so to get what X is, what I'm going to need to do is consider resolving to the right. And so that resultant force X is going to equal, well, if we go around the forces, you can see that all of 5 acts to the right. So we'll put the 5 down. Now if we take the 6 newtons, then because 6 newtons is inclined at an angle to this horizontal direction, we need to split into two components. One in that direction and the other component goes upwards. We're not interested in the component that goes upwards purely because it's at right angles to this direction. We're only concerned with the force that acts to the right. And that component will be 6 sine 20 degrees because in this 90 degrees this angle excludes that 20 degrees. 6 sine, okay, and it will be plus 6 sine 20 degrees. You could say the cosine of 70 degrees here, 6 cosine 70, it will give you exactly the same result as 6 sine 20. Now for the 8 newtons, None of this 8 newtons has any effect in the horizontal sense purely because it's at right angles to that horizontal direction. But when it comes to 7 newtons, 7 newtons has to be split into two components, one to the left and one upwards. The one upwards has no effect because it's perpendicular to this, but the one to the left will be 7 cos 30 degrees because it contains the angle to the direction that we're interested in resolving to. So it would be minus 7 cos 30. Minus because it acts in the opposite sense to what we have here. Okay, well work this out on your calculator and what you get is 0 0.9899 it's a positive value so it shows us that x is acting in that direction. Now to get y, I'm going to resolve upwards, so we'll resolve upwards in the direction of y, and so that resultant force I'm saying is y. And if we go around the forces again, let's start with the 6. We've got the 6, remember, can be split into two components, upwards and to the right. We're not interested in the one to the right because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. The one upwards contains the angle, so it'd be 6 cosine 20 degrees. Now we move on to, say, the 7 newtons. That can be split into two components, one in that direction, one in that direction. The one in this direction to the left, no effect. It's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. The one upwards would be 7 sine 30 because it doesn't contain that angle of 30 degrees. So it would be plus 7 sine 30 degrees. Or you could say the cosine of 60 degrees. Now let's move on to the 5 newtons. Well none of that will have any effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. The 8 newtons, however, all of it acts back in the opposite direction to what we've got here. So it's going to be minus 8. So if you work that out, 
you should find you get 1.1381 and so on newtons and again this is positive so the assumption that it was going to have a resultant force upwards here was correct okay all we need to do now to get the magnitude is to think of this then as being identical to the two forces acting on this particle x newtons in this direction followed by y newtons upwards and that gives us a resultant force which I just mark in like that of say r newtons so to get r newtons all I need to do is use Pythagoras' theorem because this is a right angle triangle so using Pythagoras' theorem we'll just come down through here we've got that r will equal the square root then of the sum of the squares of those two sides x squared plus y squared so we've got 0.9899 Nine, nine and so on squared plus the y value squared that is 1.1381 and so on squared if you work all of that out on your calculator you should end up with 1.5084 and so on and if you round that say to three significant figures then you're going to get 1.51 newtons to 3sf now we need to know that the angle that it makes that's the resultant with the 5 newton force so there's our 5 newton force in the horizontal sense so that would be this angle in here which we'll call theta and to get theta all you need to do is either use tan sine or cosine of this triangle I'm going to use the tan of theta which would be y over x opposite over adjacent so tan theta would equal y over x that will be 1.1381 and so on all divided by 0 0.9899 and so on and so if you work that out find out what the inverse tan of that value is you'll come out with 48.983 and so on and if we round this to say three significant figures you end up with 49.0 degrees to 3SF alright so hope you had success with that uh, question that brings us now to the end of this example